welcome to another episode of Girlhood. Today I have my very best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna make it through this interview? <laughs> my very best friend, bro. We've been best friends since we were kids. Yeah. We've grown up on the same block, and she is now a therapist. Yes. She does therapy <laughs> mainly for young children. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and the types of clients you have? <clears throat> yeah, um, I work for a nonprofit um, where I work with intense um, cases. So mainly my clients are um, in foster care. They have open DCFS cases. Um, I have clients who are currently involved in sex trafficking. Yeah, so really intense very intense case stuff all the time but i love it so so we're very silly together but <laughs> we also have very serious things that yeah. we deal with in life mm -hmm. and we will both be sharing a little bit about <clears throat> things we wish we knew before we entered into our early 20s specifically in regards to relationships <laughs> So grab your home girl, grab a snack, grab a, a smoothie or a cup of tea and come in and join us. Okay, so we're going to start with the golden question. Mm -hmm. What we wish we knew before we entered our 20s? <sighs> Let's just uh, list them. I know. <laughs> well, I think the, the biggest thing that you and I talk about is having those positive godly examples of marriage of relationship would have been helpful but then also I mean I know we can't go back and change the past but I think out the gate just my mom not knowing or just our parents in general not knowing who they are yes um was or has um affected how we move because if they don't know who they are like how can they guide us or guide us in a certain way because right. we still grew up to be <laughs> popping, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but with certain areas, such as dating, such as relationships, it would have been nice to have just like a more solid foundation yeah. of what was what, right. as you like to say. Right, <laughs> right. And I feel like <clears throat> our parents, they did the absolute best they could. We had great parents. They yeah. had us relatively young. They, they knew what they knew. They did the best with what they had. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that generation was really big on surviving. Mm -hmm. They were doing everything to provide, very physically. But when it came to like emotionally or like healthy ba boundaries and health healthy relationships, we just didn't have that modeled for us. So yeah. we were just kind of out there to figure it out for ourselves. Yeah. And I think we saw that in both of our households. Yes. 100%. Absolutely. So what else? What else do we wish we knew more specifically before we just were thrown out into our know. 20s? Because <laughs> it was a jungle once we got out there. Yeah, I wish I would have just been able to have more conversations with my mom specifically because that's our mom. Um, about dating, about guys, about mm -hmm. what to look for, what to be mindful of. What and not avoid what to avoid and not just like the extreme stuff like how we talk about just like don't get pregnant don't don't let no man hit on you like what was okay. the specific thing your dad used to say <laughs> i'm glad you said that <laughs> um my dad basically told me don't let no man put no hickey on your neck because that's like slavery so what does that mean he owns you once he puts a hickey on your neck and you don't need to be out here being owned okay thanks dad <laughs> So we got that chick. So we right. made sure we didn't do that. We made sure we didn't get pregnant. But like there were so many things. There's, it, yeah, there's like so many things in between all of that. That were missing. Yeah. So we just yeah. were kind of out there just like avoiding those three or four really big things. Yeah. But it was like, okay, well, nobody talked to us about emotional abuse. Nobody talked to us about like mental abuse or just <clears throat> things, things to avoid and things to watch out for. So yeah. we were really just kind of out there figuring it out. Yeah. Or even yeah. our worth and what we should expect of a man mm -hmm. and what we should absolutely not tolerate. Um, okay, yeah. So I think it's important that we share that we're both firstborns mm -hmm. and we have quite a few younger siblings. Yeah. So we're the big sister and like you were... <clears throat> saying yeah um I did find someone um who could be like my big sister through church we were in the choir together and she I mean she did what she could do too but it was nice to like see her in a healthy marriage she's still married mm -hmm. to her husband they okay. have two kids together she's actually someone that I still reach out to um but she knew like what to say what not to say um she 
would like point certain things out to me. So that was helpful and it was a it was more guidance than I was getting. So with what you knew, what did you do with that at that time in your life when you needed to know what you needed to know? Right. Yeah, so let's just dive in. We're 19, I meet this guy and we started dating. Mm-hmm. Um however, prior to that there was like all this drama. But anyway, we started dating, we get serious. And when you talked about like, oh, like boundaries and setting your own standards and things like that. At the time, I was like, I need somebody who's going to be chivalristic. So you just started to create your own boundaries (laughs) and standards because we didn't have them. So we was just out there like, well, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to do that. But there was all the gray area where we just had to like swim and figure it out and drown a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So, I mean, and even... That boundary and standard, it still was not being met at all. Mm. At all. That part? At all. Um, And, yeah, like, you, we think we're setting some type of standard or boundary, but there were no boundaries, the whole relationship. Um, Just down to just everything, like, the emotional abuse, so, like, being manipulative, um, not being affectionate, not communicating, not sharing things, not being appreciative like just everything so what was he because he had to be something for him to he was funny okay (laughs) so at 19 it's like oh he's funny well this was the thing too Ah! this was the thing (laughs) (laughs) because when i feel like also you gotta fix that fix fix me okay so also when we're younger we're like i just want him to have a car he needs to have a job he had a car, he had a Good job, car. and he had a degree. Okay, so I'm he like, was a little bit older. Yeah, he was a little bit mm-hmm. older. And so I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. So you can be my boyfriend. You can be my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, I, you know, I feel like at that age, like, dudes didn't have cars like that. <laughs> right, we had cars. <laughs> we had cars. But they didn't have they cars. They were trying to get like They wasn't really doing nothing. So then you meet someone older. And they have these things that right. is the standard because this is the standard we're creating for ourselves, right. even though that should just be the thing. Right. Like, right. yeah. Um, and now here you are with someone that, yes, was funny and cool and, you know. Was he chivalristic like no. you were looking for? No. So he wasn't even the one standard you had in your pocket. When, and when I brought it up to him and saying this is something that I expected, there was so much pushback, so much resistance the entire relationship from jump and so you didn't even receive that as a red flag no i was just like i'm gonna just keep trying i'm gonna just keep trying Mm. yeah yeah and that was the whole relationship just keep trying taking okay let's try this let's try that just a lot okay (laughs) so being 19 and going into that without a lot of guidance without a lot of strong examples of healthy Mm -hmm. relationships Mm -hmm. what were things that you tolerated in that relationship because you didn't know better. I want to go back before I answer that question. Um, when he started coming around, the family definitely was in an uproar <laughs> because he was older. And I feel like that could have been the time to sit down with me and say, do, 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 do. But it was just like, just the whole, just like the black and white and yeah. not like providing a clear explanation and picture of like what this could look like yeah. for, for me. Right. It's with dating like, an older guy, with like... And how many years older was he? Let's be Six. Clear. Okay, so he wasn't like a 50-year-old He was man, 26. But you were... When I met him. <laughs> okay, but you were still 19 and had an experience yeah, still as 19. much the world yeah. as he had. I was in college. I was in my second year. And... Yeah. So that. this would have been the time for them to like sit you down and just kind of ask you how you're feeling and things mm-hmm. about him and also kind of put you up on game. Right. Also spending time getting to know him a little bit too. To be- peep game. To peep game. And that's what. And that didn't happen either. And like, so there was just a lot that was just missed. Yeah. Um, not, I don't think intentionally, like on um, like my parents, but it was just missed. But your question, like you said, what were some of the things I tolerated? So that was the question, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, communication, uh, inappropriate communication with other girls. The lack of chivalry, um, lack of physical affection, and that is my number one 
love, love language, language. Okay. number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you weren't we, even receiving the basics. The basics. Right. Through, and then I know we're going to talk about this later, but, like, that's, like, a form of intimacy. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not even asking for the other stuff. Like, right. can you just hold my hand? Can we just cuddle? You know, there was none of that. Um, and how long were y'all together? Six and a half years. So the whole time, y'all, you what? It was either it milk. was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make the, you can get your hand here. <laughs> I'm just trying to make the math math. <laughs> it was either like forced, like it was like it was like something I had to think about. Yeah. Like oh yeah, she wants me to hold her hand. Like mm-hmm. or it just wasn't happening at all. Or it was like it would become an argument. Like. Yeah, but holding hands was corny to him. Okay, even though that's what you wanted. Right, exactly. Um, And physical touch is not just, like, my love language in relationships. Like, I am generally a touchy person, like, with my friends. I know. (laughs) Boy, do I know. (laughs) Yeah, so that's just, like, my love language in general. So to have that lacking for that amount of time was, like, a lot. Okay. A whole lot. Yeah, like, I would always be, like, the butt of the joke. Like, anytime we were around family, friends, like, somehow Brooke just got to be involved at the joke, trying to just tear me down, basically. Mm-hmm. I did feel like he was, I don't want to say jealous, but maybe envious and definitely intimidated by my personality. I think my joy was intimidating for him because he just didn't, didn't have his own mm-hmm. with whatever he was dealing with or whatever his insecurities were surrounding that part of me. Okay. And so I felt like he worked hard to, like, dim that light as much as he possibly could. Mm-hmm. And so being in that, like, in the present moment, mm-hmm. how did that make you feel? Because you were crazy about this guy at the same time. Right. Um, in the moment, I don't, I honestly don't know. But, like, when I look back, it's just, like, it is hurtful to know that somebody was, like, basically trying to change me. And I feel like that's something else that... I feel like would be helpful to know um, is if you feel like you have to start acting outside of your character, this person is not the one for you. So you all. felt like you had to start working outside of your character? Acting outside of my character. And like, why? Because you feel like, well, first of all, they can be doing things that are triggering you, like provoking you, basically. Like, if they're sitting around like intentionally or just boldly talking to other women, mm. And like not really caring how how you find out, mm-hmm. you gonna be crazy. You gonna you gonna you gonna cut up. You, yes. Shoot. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I can definitely share this particular story. There was one night where um, I showed up to his house because because it was your man. It was my man. Okay. And there was a woman at the gate, and I'm like, "Hello, how are you?" And I knew her. She knew me. Mm. And and then suddenly she just like vanished, disappeared. <laughs> oh, so she Houdini. She Houdini. Okay. And when he came outside, he didn't know I was going to be there. Right. So I was like, you expecting guests? He came outside to let someone else in. In his house. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, without me having any knowledge. And we were together like a couple hours before that because we went to the movies. Mm. Right. And... He just looked at me, turned around, and walked right back up to his apartment. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's no respect. So how? And then, it, there's no other way to but act crazy. And so when you act <laughs> crazy, now he's looking at you like you're crazy. Now I'm crazy. Now I'm tripping. Now I'm everything. Okay. Isn't there a word for that? Yeah, it's called gaslighting. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, just like making you feel like you're the problem or what you've seen or what you've uh, what you're trying to talk to them about is like a problem. That was another thing too. There was always like, anytime I tried to bring up anything with them and you know me, I am not an argumentative type person. Like I'm not intentionally trying to have conflict with right. people. Right, 100%. Especially my man. Uh, <laughs> and like every time I would try to just like talk to him about something simple, he would always say like, I don't feel like arguing and just like shut down the conversation. Okay, so so yeah. there was no communication. Communication is, things. yes, communication is huge. Or it was a huge issue. Okay. And you didn't really know how to get through those things because no one really put you up on game. Nobody so you were just, game. so yeah. what? Did you just kind of brush things over? Just like, there was a lot of hot and cold. There was manipulation. Mm-hmm. There was gaslighting. Mm-hmm. So what did you, how did you handle those things? You just keep going. 
Like, I wish I had more of a, a, a better explanation, but you just like, you just think it's your norm. You just think it's like, this is, this is how it is. In the relationship. Yeah, it's just another hiccup. We just had another bad day. And so you just try to make it better. You just try to make it better. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Until you start getting older mm-hmm. and then you start realizing things and you start to just like feel like this is not right. Um, and that's when I started demanding more and starting to have more clear boundaries. Mm. And that's when things really started to get turned up and not in a good way. Be sure to click the link below to watch part two.